Welcome to another CH2 cast. It, this time it's a 2v2 on Crossing in the Woods featuring um, Dr. Weird, aka Mephias, and Tresarius, who sent in the replay, so thank you. We have on the other side, uh, they're both Americans, we have on the other side one Okabe, Terror Model, and one Bearmont, Smooth Operator. So, map is Crossing in the Woods. Map is pretty good, uh, except, well, it's generally pretty good. It's generally also Axis favored, generally Axis on this map in 2v2, uh, that is. Um, do have a bit of an advantage because of, uh, well, just the areas being pretty... Uh, like, the map isn't very wide, there isn't that many flanking opportunities. Uh, after Axis gets um, a good amount of MGs and tank destroyers, they can really easily dominate the VPs in the center and the fuel points in the flanks. On this map, it there's like a pretty um, pretty notorious road cutoff over here. If the enemy has the right VP, you can cut them off. Um, if the north spawn enemy has the right fuel point, you can cut them off over here. If the south spawn has the, um, the fuel point on their side, they can cut, be cut off over here. So it's always advisable to put some caches or mines over here to protect this cutoff and also not uh, be an idiot and not cap it. Of course, he wants to use a second rifleman to cap. His rear echelons were forced away by, it looks like, a Sturm Pioneer uh, that rushed to the fuel point. It's pretty uh, standard. Uh, there's nasty negative cover over here when you're approaching this side, and on the other side, there's also negative cover, but there's also this heavy cover over here, which makes it a bit, little bit easier. Looks like Matthias will be able to catch uh, this MG42 off guard and manage to make a retreat. On a 1v1, uh, this map is a bit different. It's really not access favored at all. It's uh, more balanced because you know you have a big, way bigger area to cover, and flanks are much easier. So looks like the Okave infantry will be able to push off one rifleman squad, but not before the storm piles take heavy losses. On the other side, Matthias is able to push back uh, the Wehrmacht quite easily. Only one pioneer squad left. Looks like the allies will be able to take control of the left fuel, but not uh, the right fuel. Uh, unfortunately for the Axis, this rifleman squad managed to get in this house. Uh, what these folks around here should do is get over here and start um, start pecking away at the rifleman, or maybe even over here. They would be able to win the engagement at long range and with heavy cover. So, looks like um, Paz, before um, before getting in the house and reaching the rear echelons, was able to put some barbed wire down. Actually, no, this is OKW wire. I don't know why you would wire your side of the cover. You should have wired the other side of the cover. Um, more folks are in years approaching. Gonna push back these rear echelons quite easily. Uh, right, flanking riflemen will be able to uh, get a flank on the folks around The folks around here should have been microed well to uh, focus fire the riflemen while they were in negative cover. Now they will be flanked and likely uh, forced for a sheet. MG42 going to suppress on the left side, um, the American infantry, but the other rifleman squad manages to get around the other MG42 and manages to make a retreat. Um, Grandiers will be um, deployed to counter the flank, as well as a fighting position. Uh, this is probably a pretty good idea in the early game. Uh, you do not see a mortar on the enemy, the enemy side, so a fighting position is pretty safe right now. We'll be upgraded to an MG42, uh, no, a 50 caliber, and will help securing the fuel point. So, rifleman horde will secure the fuel point. And it's not cut off right now. Uh, now they will move on to the VP. Uh, Terra model went Lufaka supply. Um, supply. Lufaka ground forces. He did lose a full train your squad, which is terrible. He probably lost it over here. Um, because now uh, he doesn't have a lot of infantry and he needs an MG. Uh, I would have called off an MG anyway, even if I didn't lose the squad. Because you'd really need an MG to deal with all this American uh, force. You really need the suppression. So mass retreat uh, wasn't necessary, only this squad and the bed one with two men uh, should have been retreated there, but still pretty good. So we have the fighting position with the rear echelons in it and also the MGs. This will be pretty hard to defeat for a new German unit coming in. So these riflemen should actually have been uh, placed over here because the fighting position is already enough to defend this this area, and you, having the rifleman here just makes them take casualties slash deter the enemy from coming into the range of the fighting position. So MG44 has hit field on the left. What right now Paz should do is um, gather up his infantry uh, while he uses one squad as a bait on the right, uh, come from the left over here, and try to flank the MG. 
or maybe even um, go for the cutoff, but looks like Matthias' units are already going for the cutoff. Which is good. Now they will be able to cut off, and after the cutoff they will be able to flank the MG, which um, is definitely needed. 50 cal coming in from the Lieutenant tech. So, he did go Lieutenant. Right now, instead of the 50 cal, I would have gone for um, an M20, just to prevent any kind of snipers slash to plant mines. And just generally be a, a nuisance to the enemy. MG34 are going to easily suppress these riflemen that are coming in. Looks like this rifleman squad will manage to get into heavy cover while two rifleman squads flank around. This rifleman that's not suppressed will be able to deal heavy casualties to the folks around years before it is finally suppressed by the MG. But the MG right now is in a pretty bad position. It will be flanked by two rifleman squads. There's only one folks around here squad ready to assist. The stern piles are back um, on the left side for some reason. And the MG will be forced to retreat. Uh, likely not be wiped, but yeah, likely not be wiped. So now the Americans will be able to retake control of the right side thanks to a nice rifleman push. Uh, 2 2 2 Scott Car going to come in. The 2 2 Scott Car is um, pretty effective against the fighting position, as you can see. Uh, it does take a lot of damage from the fighting machine gun, but it is pretty easy to flank around it, and now the fighting position pretty much has no chance. The rifle grenades and the rifle fire of the rear echelons uh, can hurt it, but not quick enough to prevent the fighting position from going down. Right now, the Germans control the middle, which is good. The Sturm piles should actually be dispatched to this um, cutoff point just to try and harass. Ambulance coming up from uh, Tresarius, which is a good idea. Uh, now they will be able to share ambulances. Uh, ambulance being pretty expensive, but also. Uh, um, so, yeah, if, if you can share it, it's just a really good idea, especially as two Americans. Riflemen will be able to push back these folks around here with Shrex. They actually might be able to wipe them because they are not being monitored. They will have to walk over this red cover over here. Looks like they were able to survive, just by a stroke of luck. Pack coming up from the um, Wehrmacht player. I completely agree with this decision. Uh, you might be able, you might, you know, not be able to counter any kind of early armor from the Americans. And, you know. We just always have to be prepared. Right, anti tank rifle grenade coming on the Scott card. They could have actually tried to, um, tried to finish it off with rifle fire, but it would have been pretty risky because of the storm piles that we're approaching. Two 50 cals. Um, looks like he is going for a little bit of a German almost strategy. Uh, two 50 cals will be uh, pretty useful on this map, so I do not necessarily disagree at this point. He did go tactical support company. Tactical support company is very, very dangerous, especially in these small maps. The Calliope can pretty much shoot like halfway across the map and deal heavy damage to any kind of infantry blobs. And also the quad actually could be a good idea right now because he does have a little bit of a munitions float and just that extra suppression unit slash not even upgrading to a quad and using it as a reinforcement point also could be useful. But probably he's saving up for the LMGs. So on the left side, looks like this uh, rifleman squad almost going down to the um, to the Grenadiers. MG42 versus um, 50 cal will be uh, in favor of the uh, MG42 because the 50 cal was in negative cover in the river. So the pack is a little bit forward, uh, a little bit too forward in fact. Uh, looks like the the Okabe went for a medical issue in their base, uh, which. I do not really agree with, uh, there was really no pressure from the Americans, so he could have placed his medical HQ like over here or over here and gone for a forward retreat point. But clearly, he maybe wanted to save his manpower slash play more conservatively just in case the Americans were to make an aggressive push for it. You never know. So MG42, uh, MG44 once again facing a little bit... Um, in the wrong way, you know that you're being flanked from the left a lot, so maybe you should have uh, faced it over this way so that it could still cover a little bit of the northern passage and of the western passage as well. So the Fuchs Reindeer Blob was able to recapture um, temporarily the right side, but now the riflemen are back and there will be a pretty uh, heavy fight for it. Uh, uh, Tresarius went for an AT gun, 
and he did um, send his AT gun to the left. Interestingly, uh, there's a teller mine on the VP. Not sure if the smooth operator knows that teller mines do not get triggered by infantry. I mean, it is on the road, so vehicles will prefer this path, so that's why the teller mine is there probably. Uh, the 222 Scott car is still alive at Vet 1. Uh, at Vet 1, it gets uh, infantry awareness, which is a pretty good ability if you. Um, if you cannot see like uh, over this terrain over here or any kind of terrain like that and you cannot see over it will uh, reveal all units all infantry units on the mini map in a pretty decent radius at the cost of speed and munitions what right now he should be going uh, is since he went for Jaeger armor option which has spotting scopes yeah he's going to upgrade spotting scopes on his um, Chu -Chu -Chu. the Chu -Chu -Chu, uh, with Scott spotting scopes is very effective at scouting um, Pretty much just as effective as the T70 with recon mode at Vet 2, which is um, to say it can see like over a screen away. It's really ridiculous. Uh, so at this close range, really the um, Yokave shouldn't be taking these engagements at close range. Should have retreated across the river. So Rangers will be coming in. Uh, will be upgraded with Thompson's tactical uh, heavy cavalry company chosen from Tercerius, uh, which is a good choice since. The only other companies you could choose were other tactical supports and two tactical supports that are not needed. Rangers with uh, the M1 carbines will be able to inflict some damage before retreating, uh, just before they get the upgrade. Uh, didn't want to lose the expensive Rangers. Oh, Schwer Panzer headquarters is actually going down in a uh, deceptively vulnerable location because these, this rifleman horde, if it had gone for the cutoff claim, it could have actually spotted the Schwerer Panzer and actually destroyed it fairly quickly because of the LMGs. So he's really lucky that these riflemen went for the flank on the right side instead of the cutoff point. These riflemen might be able to wipe this um, foot surrender, but they will be warded off by the MG34. Smoke coming in on the MG34. Not that not the best coordination uh, between. Tresaris and Matthias. If Matthias hadn't retreated right now, uh, all these riflemen and the captain could be able, could be effective in just destroying the Axis infantry on the right side, but alas. So this rear echelon should be sent in to cap this point that everyone forgets about, and the riflemen should be flanking around over here. At the same time, Matthias is nicely holding onto the left side. Uh, the Wehrmacht Mortar uh, should have uh, been a red flag to the to Matthias to not build his fighting position. He should have relied on the 50 cows, which would have been more than enough to protect the left side and provide suppression. Filtering is charging into close range against Rackman, definitely not the best idea. They will throw a grenade to deny this heavy cover, but the Rackman will just get into the other heavy cover, as well as reinforcement suppression from the north will ward off the German attack over here. On the left side, uh, looks like the. Let's see the fog of war um, to see how fast this scout car can see. As you can see, this scout car normally it can only see up to here, but as you will see once it uh, sets up, that that side range is just insane. It like if it was sitting over here, it could probably see up to like here. It's just so good, especially on smaller maps. So talking more about doctrine selection, uh, Luftwaffe ground forces is always good right now for Okave. I pick it pretty much every time I play uh, Okave, just because Fallschirmjägers, um, Fallschirmjägers are good, are good um, in place of Wolbersoldaten, which in my opinion aren't that great. Um, I mean, as I say it, he did go Wolbersoldaten, but because yeah. he doesn't have the munitions to upgrade them, so he should have just gotten Fallschirmjägers really. Nicely, uh, folks firing the MG from all this, all these rifleman squads will force the MG to retreat. Now you should focus fire on the Obersoldan to make them retreat before they pop any LMGs. Of course, he isn't upgrading them, but uh, Paz uh, doesn't know about this. He should just assume that they are upgrading. Uh, Rif um, Storm Pioneers coming from the flank. Nice micro from uh, Paz just instantly clicking his rifleman to focus fire the uh, Storm Pioneers, and they will be um, pretty much forced to retreat. But another flank from the south, from the reinforcing force trainers, will force all the right to retreat. 
So the Germans will be able to regain control of the left side very back, back and forth for now. On the left side, Matthias, uh, he is doing pretty well. He's got a pretty decent force of riflemen that's very well equipped with LMGs, but um, he's lacking AT, uh, having to rely on Paz's AT gun to you know, ward off any German vehicles that might be coming his way. He did go for a Sherman, so he did upgrade to Tech 3, which is good, uh, though he should probably have not sent it to the uh, side that had a bunch of Panzer Frecks. He should probably have kept it on his side. The only danger on his side is the pack and, well, the Teller Mines too, but he doesn't really know about the Teller Mines. Uh, uncharacter uncharacteristically, he hasn't gone for um, any kind of uh, Minesweepers. Usually Matthias does go for Minesweepers for the uh, early, because he's a good player. But this time he didn't, so right now he's unaware of the Teller Mine danger that's lurking around. There's a Teller Mine over here, a Teller Mine over here and also another Teller Mine over here. So the Scott Car and the Schwer Panzer uh, did shoot down this recon plane, so it was a waste of munitions. Rifleman Horde coming in, I'm gonna charge in. Uh, nice use of smoke. This this ability is really underrated for the Heavy Cavalry Company because it, the smoke from this, um, from this strike just drops very quickly, so it's really useful for um, quickly smoking an MG or a pack gun and proceeding forward. Looks like a grenade will be coming down on the FG-34, probably wiping it in one hit. It does wipe... You no, know, it doesn't wipe it, but the rifleman fire will likely wipe it. Wow, really lucky. Actually, no, it does get wiped at maximum range. The Obersoldaten were able to, um, to push back the rangers, but now the rifleman squads uh, might be able to win this fight. I don't think so. They will just be um, stealing the MG and be off on their way. Unfortunately, this Rifleman squad might go down from the Storm Pioneers. There's a, there's a whole engagement on the left side that I'm missing because I cannot. Um, nicely actually winning the engagement, forcing the Obersoldat to retreat. Looks like the engagement was won by the Americans. Uh, Sherman did get a damage engine from a Panzer Faust, but uh, it, was, uh, it was safe from all the smoke, which probably got popped. Looks like the pack wasn't able to assess the time. Now we have a Stug coming in from the Germans. I don't know what it is with games that I get to cast. Uh, Stugs, they seem to uh, pop up. Like, literally every game I cast, there's a Wehrmacht, he gets a Stug. Good god, I'm tired of talking about Stugs. So another Sherman coming from Matthias. Um, yeah, I agree with the decision. He's gonna have enough um, fuel for um, Lapis anyway. Uh, Jackson might have been more prudent, but... Still, two Shermans um, can still do pretty well in the early game. Like I said, um, his lack of AT means that a Jackson would have probably been a better choice, but you never know. So Major charging in for head first into the fight, not a good idea. Uh, Rangers will, will close the distance and some kind of airstrike is coming in. What's this? Is this fake artillery from Major? No. What? Major RD? Yeah, this is Major. This has to be Major RD. This is just that pathetic. I did not know why Paz decided to use Major RD. So this Sherman is going to come in and wipe a Folks Grenadier squad completely. They were stacking up on the cover in a pretty bad way. A pack gun will be able to take a few pot shots, nicely missing. So this is that was that was very unlucky for the Germans. They would have been able to probably actually kill the Sherman with the Rakenwerfer shot. Talking more about Doctrine Selection, um, yeah, like I said, Heavy Cavalry Company, good idea. Uh, on this map, heavy tanks are pretty useful, and a fast heavy tank like the Pershing, even more so because of mostly open terrain. Uh, um, Luftwaffe Ground Force is a good idea. Um, tactical support, also pretty good. Uh, elephants, um, Jaeger Armor can be a good idea because of the wide open lanes on the map, um, being favorable to the spotting scope and the Elephant. And also the Sugar Mummy Strike um, being always useful. Some nice map pack with the Horn Buddy. Um, I don't really know. Um, it's got 10 kills and free. Uh, it's got 10 kills and free vet, but I wouldn't really know why that would be map packs. Really. Rifleman MGs and now the AT. Oh no, it's actually the um, it's actually the spotting scope 2 2 2. 
that's seeing all this stuff. Yeah, as you can see, it's like on the verge of the sight range of almost all the units. That's because of the spotting scope. I paid big dollars for it. <laughs> so yeah, it's actually just good to play with um, spotting scopes and sight radiuses. Maybe a little bit unbalanced, but definitely not hacking. Yeah, like I said, um, just wait for a Werfer! <laughs> He's gonna get Panzer Werfer very soon. So Calliope is on the field. I mean, ironically, just wait for the Werfer. Here comes the American Werfer. Uh, going to be shooting at the Mortar because... Yeah, wait for mine. I mean, the, the one-liner was, like, obvious. So right now, the VP situation is in favor of the Allies completely. Uh, 150 cal will be... Um, oh my god! The strafing run actually wipes two, uh, grand one Grenadier squad and almost wipes another Grenadier squad. Holy shit. This is like the Company Furious one strafing run. What the fuck? That was insane. I wasn't expecting that much damage out of it. So now he sees he sees the culprit, which is the Stug um, 2 2 2 combo with the spotting scopes. He will be able to rifle grenade the uh, 2 2 2. But at the same time, uh, somehow this AT gun was degrouped, so now the Shermans will have to uh, charge in to try and finish off the 2 2 2, but they will be worded off by the Stug. If they had been a little bit more. Um, a little bit more tenacious in their pursuit, they might have been able to actually take out both the Stug and the. Armored car, but the pack was in wait somewhere, so it was actually a good idea to play conservatively there. Uh, at the same time, Paz was able to completely retake the right side and push back the um, Okabe to their base. Looks like the Okabe will, will be going for a King Tiger, which is a good idea because um, the Wehrmacht does not have a heavy tank. They will only go for a tank destroyer, so this is good um, team communication. Though it looks like he will be going for a Stuka first. Um, I kind of agree with the Stuka, but I also kind of think that the Panzer Werfer is a little bit of a better unit right now in the meta. In general, uh, it's just a little bit better because it can fire more and it's a little bit more accurate, really. Uh, as much as the Stuka is really accurate, uh, the line firing system doesn't make it as useful as the small circle firing system, I guess, of the Panzer Werfer. So Calliope will be firing on the mortar again wiping the vet free mortar off the field. Definitely some good barrages. Um, I do not know actually how he sees where the mortar is. I guess the mortar has... Yeah, the mortar is actually facing towards the right, so it had been firing and doing itself. So this is really um, a bit of the Wehrmacht player's fault for not really repositioning his mortar, which would have been a good idea. So a nice M26 Pershing is on the field. Um, Tresarius didn't go for um, a tier, actually he did go for a tier four. Uh, actually, what he should be doing is putting his ambulance over here and his retreat point. Oh, no, actually over here and his retreat point over here, just to make his um, retreat slash um, getting back into the fight cycle a little bit faster. At this at this time, uh, what I would really do if I was Paz is go for um, go for um, Jackson because they really need some kind of long-range AT. Again, um, this all this stuff should really be repositioned. I don't think they can see it. Yeah, no, they cannot see it, but they're just like... Um, they know that a lot of stuff is over here, so yeah. At the same time, Mephias did go for two Calliopes, and he also has two Shermans, so this is very scary out of Mephias right now. Um, the two Calliope combination is very powerful in both 1v1 and 2v2, and also obviously uh, bigger team games. Stuka, we will see how this does, but in my opinion, it will not do that greatly. As I say that, it almost wipes a weapon squad, but in my opinion, going for a King Tiger, which would be 60 fuel away to, uh, would be a more prudent decision. At the same time, um, nice strafing run supporting a big armor push uh, from Fias. Uh, luckily for the Germans, they will timely uh, regain uh, the pack gun that was decrewed earlier. These riflemen, actually, if they had flanked from the left, this push might have been actually a little bit more successful. But a Calliope strike is um, back available. He has been staggering the Calliope fire. 
what you want to be doing when you have two artillery pieces is fire one. You should not fire them both at the same time. You should fire one and then one and then one. Just to have like a more constant stream of barrages to decrew team weapons and such. And just generally annoy your opponent. So this is definitely a good play with the Calliope's. So it looks like the Germans did go for a um, a bit of a more um, consolidated on the right side strategy. There are Wehrmacht units supporting Okave units at this side. Big rifleman push will be able to push back the uh, Obersoldaten, but uh, one more MG42 will be able to suppress them. Almost all of them are vet free, which is pretty good. So Pershing has 7 kills, definitely been doing well. Um, Rakettenwerfer and um, Spawning Scope 2 2 combination. Just look at that, you can see, that 2 2 can see almost into the base, into the repairing Shermans. That's just insane. I mean, it may not be map hacks, but uh, it's close enough. So Shara Panzer will uh, ward off this Allied infantry push into the center of the map, but um, at the same time the Stug is going forward. It will try to spot these Shermans that are repairing. See, at this point, uh, what the Stuka should do actually, it, it should have gone over here and barraged the repair crews of the Shermans. Because if that wiped the Sherman repair crews, then he would have had to like buy rear echelons to recruit them and lose all the vet on the Shermans. I mean, he doesn't have any real vet right now, but he is pretty close to it. Nice pack push to get grab the middle VP. They are really hurting for VPs, so they really need the VPs. And it was also able to get a couple pot shots on the Shermans. So now there's three Shermans on the field for Matthias, which is very, very scary. He is lacking on the infantry, but he definitely has the armored pushing power. So Elephant is on the field, and it's on the wrong side. Well, it's, it's actually on the right side. Um, it's both figuratively and... Uh, map wise on the right side because of the Pershing. The Pershing um, is pretty much countered by the Elephant. Well, not entirely because it is fast enough to circle strafe it, unlike the East 2 or the Churchill. But in general, the Elephant is really good against uh, Allied Heavy Tanks. The Elephant also is no slouch when it comes to vision with spotting scope, as you can see. So on the left side, the Shermans will be able to completely eradicate uh, whatever. Oh, 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 that's that's not good. Um, he misclicked and a T twice on his um, Tellermine crew. Because these, this Sherman got hit by a Tellermine, he got the, the crew out with T, which is the same hotkey as he, that you use for retreating. So he pressed, pressed T twice and they retreated after getting out of the tank. Bit of a mistake. Actually, this Calliope Barrage almost exploding all these mines. That's very lucky for the Germans that that did not happen. 50 cal was decrewed by the pioneers, I guess. Or maybe... Looks like the mortar, actually. Yeah, from all the moon moon craters over here. It was the mortar. So, nice job from Paz. He does see that um, the elephant is on the right side, so he moves the Pershing around. Making the presence of the elephant here pretty useless. Nice Stuka Barrage could be very dangerous to these units, but it was targeted uh, a little bit further back to avoid any friendly fire. Uh, nicely takes out the Major, but uh, again, these Stuka Barrages aren't being, being very useful for the fuel cost of the Stuka. Right now, if uh, he hadn't bought that Stuka, he would be able to field a King Tiger, which would definitely be very useful. Nice mine placement from the uh, Okabe. We'll be able to take out a lot of infantry that's pushing up. Ooh, nice. Nice Shuka airstrike with the crews and MG. What the Shuka actually uh, Stuka airstrike should actually be used for is taking out um, Calliope's slash repairing vehicle crews. So it looks like he did a pretty good uh, job. He jumped out the vehicle crew on this Sherman and went to repair the other Sherman while the vehicle crew uh, of this Sherman was retreating to the base and coming back on the field. Thus not allowing the Sherman uh, to just sit here for no reason. 
Shermans will uh, try for a flank, but right now they're a bit unsupported. They have AP rounds equipped uh, for the Stug, but this will mean that this uh, Grenadier squad is able to retreat pretty safely. M26 Pershing up to 16 kills definitely be very useful. But right now the Germans uh, should probably do is actually focus more on the left side rather than the right side. Um, the reasoning is that uh, on this side Paz is the way stronger infantry force and really what the Germans right now are excelling in is anti-tank with the Elephant and the Stug and the Pak gun and the Shreks. So they, they would be able to deal heavy damage to the uh, Sherman heavy composition of Matthias and at the same time their um, Elephant slash um, Elephant slash Chiduka slash uh, whatever combo would be less vulnerable to the Calliope than the uh, support weapons combo that they're using right now on the left side. Because right now the Germans are in a pretty bad spot because of the Calliope's but at the same time they can pretty easily recover if they make the right decisions. The Stuka Barrage was aimed well but Matthias was able to dodge uh, nicely. Obersalan squad will be in a pretty bad spot uh, under fire from the Pershing and the LMGs will be forced to retreat. At this point what uh, the allies need to do, other than getting the Jackson, so has definitely doing good getting a Jackson, is just uh, holding back, not wasting the free Shermans that are the guarantee that the German infantry will not be a problem anytime soon, and just using the Calliope's to uh, continue, continue whittling down the Germans as much as possible. At the same time, uh, stolen 50 cal being very useful for the Germans uh, shutting down a bunch of infantry pushes. Looks like the Allied armor will be making a combined push. Uh, we'll ride right into our Rakan Berker and the Elephant. At the same time, nice uses of smoke from uh, Tresarius. Uh, we'll be able to uh, stop the fire of the Elephant as much as possible. Stug is going to go down from the flanking Shermans. Flanking Shermans will get into the rear of the Elephant as well as the Jackson at the same time. Uh, a King Tiger is approaching from the right side, but it will not be in time in my opinion to save this Elephant. This Sherman is almost dead. This Sherman doesn't have a main gun. Jackson goes down from the King Tiger and the German anti tank infantry, but the Pershing is still alive and well. Another Sherman goes down. Three, all the three Shermans went down. There, the Pershing is the only allied tank left on the field, but um, at the same time the King Tiger is the only Axis tank left on the field. The allied infantry has been pushing this entire time, but uh, their push was shut down by the German MG wall and they are all suppressed and were all forced to retreat. And now the German infantry is coming back, uh, half reinforced because uh, the situation is very much an emergency. King Tiger is at half HP as well as the Pershing at half HP. Uh, looks like the Germans will be able to secure control of the right side and also the left side because at the same time um, the pioneers were able to harass and steal an AT gun as well as this MG42 um, coming back on the field. And they will be able to take out this other 57mm AT gun. So this is a very good push for the, a very good battle for the Germans. You'll also be able to secure a bunch of wrecks uh, for salvage for the OKV player. So that was a very, very intense fight. As soon as I said, um, you know, it would have probably been a pretty good idea to conserve the Germans and play conservatively. Uh, because with the Clive, you would be able to eventually whittle down the Germans. And now you're in a position where um, the Germans have a, maybe not a commanding lead because of the elephant loss. But the Germans are definitely in a better spot than we were five minutes ago. Though at the same time, Mafias decided to invest heavily on Calliope's D. The scout car might be going down and it will go down. Definitely a bad um, loss with the vet free scout car. Uh, he's immediately going to buy another one, which is the actually completely the correct decision. Because you never know um, when you will need the vision range. So. At the same time, the Germans are able to secure a bunch of support weapons for their end, which will be um, helpful to secure uh, whatever gains they make in the future, but also be very vulnerable to the Calliope, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, another Jackson from Tesserius will be almost destroyed. It gets away with a sliver of health. King Tiger decimates the American infantry, but at the same time, the Calliope strike will force the beleaguer German infantry to retreat. At the same time, um, the Grenadier's force uh, of Smooth Operator has been decimated during the course of the battle, and he is only now uh, regaining free 
re um, upgrading them. No, rebuilding them. Sorry for the little bit of a stupidity moment. So, um, looks like this. there's a threat spot over here. Might be trying to snipe uh, a little bit of Calliope's. Well, maybe not snipe them, but definitely um, definitely push them back to the sneaky Fox Ranger squad, which is the correct way to approach um, mechanized artillery pieces like that. So, Rangers will be able to push up um, on the right side. On the right side, we have a pretty... Um, pretty unique thing in these kinds of 2v2s with a lot of artillery and on this map is that both sides were able to um, pretty much preserve a pretty vetted infantry force and they're all now going up against each other. Of course the Germans do have an advantage in the late game on these kind of um, open maps. At the same time, uh, both players are now uh, pretty much focusing entirely on the right side and only sending harassment forces to the left. Flappy Barrage almost wiping the stern pile squad and this MG if they will not be retreated they will probably be wiped soon as as they instantly get wiped. But now um, the German infantry is pushing up fiercely fiercely into the uh, allied rear areas and is bringing up two AT guns, one pack, actually three AT guns, one 57 mm one, um, one pack and one Rakenwerfer. At the same time point blank Flappy Barrages into the AT guns rolled through the pack, for, the pack 40 but uh, the King Tiger will push through undaunted, completely disregarding its safety and just taking pot shots at the Calliope. We have an, also an airstrike from the Stukas, uh, from the Jaeger armor, which will go down and almost wipe a rifling squad. Uh, but at the same time, the King Tiger is taking heavy damage from the Jacksons and will be forced to retreat. So this push was altogether successful for the Axis in taking the territory, but they will probably not be able to hold it. At the same time, in the left, we have a big push from Dr. Weird, the okay, Matthias. His infantry will be decimated by MG42s, but the nice airstrike will be able to wipe the MG42 and he will be able to take the MG42 for himself. In the meantime, the BP situation has been very well for the Axis uh, as a result of that failed Allied push a little bit earlier. So now they have dropped half the Allied uh, VPs, but they are also at only 100 VPs themselves. So if the Allies can retake uh, control of the game, uh, the defeat for the Axis will come very quickly. Nicely using the second AT gun to destroy the pack so that the uh, allies cannot regain it. At the same time, a, a new elephant was called. Um, I do not necessarily agree with this decision, actually. Um, no, actually, no, I do agree. Because of the lots of Jacksons that the allies are going for, uh, the elephant is a good idea. I was gonna say, a panther may have been a better idea to hunt down Calliope's. Because right now, the the allies are kind of lacking in uh, static anti-tank. They have two Jacksons, and that's pretty much it. The rest of their anti-tank is infantry, which is good enough for the King Tiger, but Panthers are no whole other deal. So here comes another Jackson from the side from Matthias. It will try to finish off this King Tiger, as well as the supporting Jackson from the uh, north. This Jackson will go down to actually Calliope and Shrek Fire, and the other Jackson will go down from uh, Shrek Fire. So the trade is pretty even um, in resources, but at the same time, it's better a better trade for the allies because right now um, the Germans do not have the kind of um, manpower and fuel reserves to recall in the King Tiger, but the allies do have the fuel, fuel and manpower reserves to call in more Jacksons. So the Jackson will actually charge straight onto the Elephant, which was pushing up the center for some reason. It was actually trying to hunt the Pershing and the Calliope, in my opinion, but it's a pretty bad idea. So the elephant will be pushed back. Jackson actually uh, taking heavy damage from the one elephant shot. The second elephant shot will likely take it down. Actually, does manage to get into outside of the arc of fire. You know, just at the last moment, two to two fire will take it out. But at the same time, the elephant is also in dire straits. This one M5 AT gun is supporting it pretty well. Uh, it's down to one hit from the Pershing. One hit from the Pershing will kill it. The smoke will uh, cover it for a little bit, but the Bet Free now Pershing will be able to secure the kill and retreat safely out of this M5 AT gun, M1 AT gun's range. At the same time, a Calliope strike almost takes out the Bet 2 AT gun. Uh, Bet 2 American AT guns are very, very powerful because of this take aim ability. Uh, at the same time, the second 2 2 Scott card, which uh, has increased side range from the um, Side range from the uh, Vet 2 and the Scope almost goes down, but manages to luckily uh, for itself get back to the medical HQ. 
a nice big German infantry push in the center. Try wanted to actually catch these Calliope's maybe off guard over here, but um, the Calliope's will catch them off guard and deal heavy damage to this force and force it to retreat. A couple of infantry squads will stay back to try and decap the connecting point, but um, it will be forced to retreat fairly soon. It does manage to decap the cutoff, but uh, at the same time, the left fuel is in control of the allies as well as the left BP. Uh, middle is being regained by the Axis after that big uh, allied push. So in that push, the allies lost two Jacksons um, in exchange for an Elephant, which again is a pretty good trade just because uh, while in resources it's pretty even, the Axis do not have the um, reserves to replace the Jackson. Still push up, deal heavy damage to the German MGs, as well as um, a recon plane, allowing it to see the MG. So that's definitely good for it. Pushing up to 32 kills uh, will be pretty impervious uh, to whatever Germans uh, throw at them at this point. More Calliope fire will uh, almost do the AT gun. Actually, no, it will. Which is very bad because it, the vent 2 is very, very valuable in this AT gun. And I think at this point, the allies are going to win the game, likely. That, of course, won't stop the Germans from trying. They still have a lot of uh, very well vetted infantry. And another KT. At the same time, the Stuk hasn't been very useful this game. Only got 11 kills. In my opinion, it was a mistake. And I think Tiger should have come earlier on the field. Uh, maybe if you wanted to get something to support the King Tiger, it should have been a Jagdpanzer instead. Uh, Jagdpanzers are very good against Jacksons, and also very good against the Pershing, so, yeah. Allied infantry push as, uh, as well as um, Jacksons and Pershing will be able to take out the Stug. So what could the Germans have done differently? Like I said, Jagdpanzer would have been a really good idea on this map, um, instead of the Stugs. Uh, really, uh, so maybe P4s or Panthers would have been a better choice for the Wehrmacht player to get to support his Elephant and the King Tiger. Uh, a little bit less over-reliance on support weapons would have been nice, but uh, again, that's really hard to do in this map in 2v2s, uh, just to be a little less vulnerable to Calliope's. A little bit more effort in hunting Calliope's, again, that's why the Panther or P4 would have been pretty good. At the same time, um, the King Tiger was a good idea, but it came a little bit late. So not the Stuka would have been a good idea. Uh, nice infantry play from pretty much every side. Uh, smooth Operator was the only one who got like severely wiped, but that's because he was like, up against the Calliope, so... Yeah, pretty much... Um, pretty much a bit harder to avoid than your regular... Uh, your regular wipes. And yeah, pretty much that. Uh, the Germans did play well uh, in just concentrating on one side, but I think they concentrated on the wrong side, they should have concentrated on the left side, instead of the right side. Another Stuka strike, gonna deal some damage to the right woman. Um, it was actually, I think, targeted at this Jackson, where the crew was out repairing, but uh, it didn't manage to get back in very quickly. The Doctrine choices were all pretty good in my opinion, so really no, no break with that. So more Jacksons coming in from the Allies to just uh, keep the KT at bay, which is good. Because at this point they have uh, infantry superiority because of the constant Calliope barraging. Oaks Reindeers will be forced to retreat by the Pershing. More Calliope barrages will try to take, take out the packs. 
Bazooka will not do that much damage, but along with the King Tiger and the Pax, we will be able to snipe off this one Jackson. Pershing almost killed. At the same time, we have a big Jackson flying coming in from a bias. We'll take out the King Tiger. Um, 2 to 2 again, dealing heavy damage to the Jackson. Surprisingly heavy damage to the Jacksons. But at the same time, a nice Stuka airstrike will take out uh, half the HP of this Jackson and ward off some of the Allied infantry, which was uh, afraid of getting wiped by the Stuka, Stuka strike. Nice Calliope Barrage will probably decrew this back and turn away for whatever Allied infantry wants to come in. Airborne Assault being used on the left side, which is good to flank the MG. But it will be instantly pinned by the other strafing run from the P-47. And will probably uh, result in the wiping of the Flarshamagers by this stolen MG-42. Rager still alive up to 29 kills. Probably soon more from this grenade. Good dodge, but uh, still takes about half the squad in a chunk. MG-34, um, going to probably suppress the Rangers a bit too late to save these Hulk Rangers. And yeah, this is pretty much GG. So thanks for watching uh, this replay, I hope you enjoyed this cast, and I also hope you learned something. There was definitely a lot to learn from this cast, about generally why this map um, is kind of ru ruled by artillery in general, and can sometimes be very access favored, but um, Paz and uh, Mephias definitely play well to avert that. Also, uh, I might add, very nice use of smoke all, all game. Um, he's, I mean, he used smoke pretty much every time uh, he made a big push, and he's still floating 600 munitions, so that's pretty much why you can afford to use the smoke ability. It's very cheap at 50 munitions. GG coming down, and pretty much the VPs are gone, and so this will be end of the game. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed.